Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. There you go. It's live now. So, now welcome you can hear for us. joining hey, us. And welcome back to the family room. <sighs> welcome to the family room. It's a fun day. That's awesome. I didn't know that was going on. Well, thank you, Kelsey. Uh, for those wait, of you wait, that wait, have wait. joined us, we're starting over. Welcome back uh, on the family room. Let us know where you're watching from. <laughs> that would have been great. Why that wasn't 40 working. 40 minutes of. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad she was here because we didn't know. Uh, so all the announcements that you just missed because I was talking without any audio, that's great. We just wanted people to, uh, you know, We were just checking here. to see if y'all were going to tell us. So, yeah, let us know where you're watching from. Real quick, the announcements again. Dining with Dignity, August 1st, uh, 5.30 to se- uh, 6.30, sorry. Uh, the next food truck Sunday is this Sunday, August 4th. It's the Saucy Pig. Uh, the Voyager Kids Back to School Bash, you need to register on our website, familychurch.social slash, slash events. Then on August 11th, we have a blood drive going on with Life Source, and we're also starting up the Grief Share group. Um, to get with that, you need to get on our app, get in the groups. You can download our app by going to the homepage of our website, familychurch.social. Scroll down, that's the easiest way to find uh, the app. You can also access the. <laughs> I'm so glad you were here. It, it takes a minute. Um, you can access the groups from a web browser. <laughs> and uh, apart from that, let's talk about night, the new things that are going on. What new things? Well, there's a lot of well, new the stuff. The next youth night on. is August 18th. Huh? The next youth night is August 18th. A lot of new things. A lot of new things. The grief share for people that are interested in uh, anything to do with uh, managing <laughs> your funny. grief and dealing with your grief. That's important. Jump in that. Uh, but today, rolling and we're rolling it out Sunday, family care. Oh, yeah. The Be new family Sunday. care thing. Um, so, yeah. Let me go back to the text. Or if you, you go ahead on that one. Family I'm care. Be here Sunday. We're going to roll it out. Two of the members of our congregation have talked about this for a year. We've been in discussions with it for a little while. And now you can hear us. Good. Uh, but what it is is a ministry in-house to the people of our church uh, for hospital visitations, nursing homes, light yard work, all those kinds of things that we know we're supposed to be doing. And as our congregation ages a little bit, it's important for us to have people to be able to do that. So the Mark and Mike have stepped up, and they are going to head that. We're going to announce it a little bit Sunday. We're going to put the things together. You can sign up for that. We will make sure that you know how to sign up for it and be in part of it. There's other people that want to volunteer and be a part of it. So... We're excited about it. There's a lot of really cool things that are going on right now as it relates to ministering to the people, taking care of the people. This grief share, I'm very excited about that because I think that there are a lot of people that are going to need that. On the app, they're already talking back and forth. Yeah, They're already That's starting great. to share stories and pray for one another. It's going to be great. The next steps, the next season is going to be really pretty it's awesome. really good. And if you're not in any groups yet, uh, definitely encourage you to get on our app. Um, and we also just started up a Facebook group, um, family community or whatever the name is, family church community, uh, just for people to just talk and connect and, and everything like yep. that in there. Um, but now, since we finally have audio again, <laughs> we're here to talk about Sunday's message uh, out of Acts 27, 13 to 26, No Time to Die. Where did you get that title? I've never heard that sentence You know, it just came to me, yep. like, in about... 0.07 seconds. That's awesome. Like 007 seconds. Yeah. That's fantastic. Because I thought, man, what a great title. I was actually wondering if we were going to get <laughs> bumped offline for a no. copyright violation. Let it come. <laughs> there will be worse things. No time to die. What was the, what was the point? The point was uh, the story of Paul going through the storm on the ship, uh, trying to take the gospel to Rome to go talk in front of Caesar, share the gospel in front of Caesar. Of course, as we know, and as I preached, they get caught in a huge storm uh, that you know went on for more than two weeks, and you would imagine that Eurocladon. it would have killed you. And it would, what? Eurocladon. Oh, yes. I didn't say the name Sunday. You called it a nor'easter. Well, yeah, because I went from the NIV. Mm-hmm. But um, True story. That, and uh, I also said Publius's name, I said it was Publix, because I didn't want to stumble <laughs> over it. 
But uh, yeah, so it was just, you know, the, the reality of the storms that we go through in life. And so often we feel like they're going to kill us or, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to die in them. And it was just the point to drive home was that Paul knew, uh, even though he got reminded, he still knew that he wasn't going to die in this situation simply because God had already told him what he was supposed to do. Yep. He was told three times what he was going to go do. So he knew, he had confirmation that he was not going to die here. And I just wanted to speak that into everyone's lives, you know, that's going through a tough time, going through mm -hmm. a storm, uh, that, you know, you're not going to die in the storm that you are in. Yep. It's important. It's an important confirmation for people uh, because sometimes we can feel like that the storms of life are so overwhelming that they're going to stop you. But when you have a revelation, that's why it's so important for people to stay in the Word, stay in prayer, be led by the Holy Spirit, walk in that continuous prayerful relationship with God, have a revelation for your life because Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But when you have a vision, when you have an open revelation of what God wants you to do, you're going. he said, you're going to Rome. You will speak in Rome. And so the storm was inconsequential. The snake was inconsequential. Everything else was, was secondary and beside the point. What a place in life to be at where you just kind of know, I'm, right now I am indestructible because I've got somewhere to be. Yeah, it was, it was a, great, a great thing. I mean, they, obviously it's not fun going through it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people, you know, we tend to get in the idea of, you know, the false mindset of, you know, once you're, a Christian, once you're with Jesus, everything's going to be, you know, top shape and super easy and everything's going to come your way and, you know, nothing bad is going to happen. And then as soon as, uh, you know, the storm comes, all of a sudden your, your faith is starting to shake. And the reality is, you know, and, and we've said it here before that you, you're never under attack until you're finally uh, under the anointing, mm -hmm. until you're finally covered by the blood of Jesus, there's really no reason for Satan to attack you because you're living in your sin still. You're mm -hmm. still living in the world. <clears throat> you're still being kind of ruled by Satan just because he has dominion over the earth. And until you finally become a Christian, there's not really any sense in him attacking you. But, you know, as soon as you plead the blood of Jesus and you accept him as your Lord and Savior and, you know, you, you believe in your heart and you trust him and you put your faith in him, man, every every storm yep. is going to immediately come your way. And it's not fun and it's like probably the worst selling point for anything. Like, <laughs> hey, come be a Christian. Life's going to get Life's harder gonna because get hard. the devil hates you. But uh, it's just a, True. It's a, it's it's not easy. It's worth it. It's worth it. Quotable quotes. Those of you that are watching, either YouTube or Facebook, if you had a quote or a quotable idea from the sermon, write it down, throw it online. You can comment on each place. We, will, we can see those there. I'll go some, with some quotables that I wrote down. We say that the safest place to be is in God's will, but what about when sovereignty doesn't look safe? Yeah, so obviously I told you, um, for those that don't know in the background on the family room, you had sent the first part of that kind of from your devotional, and then I kind of tweaked it a little mm -hmm. bit for the sermon. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, everybody thinks, oh yeah, the safest place to be is God's will. You know, as long as you're in God's will, it's you, nothing can touch you and ball. And it's like, no, you look at Job. That's why right. I hammered in on Job later in the sermon. Just you look at him and he was, he was just doing his thing. He's, you know, blessed by God and everything. And the next thing you know, the devil is allowed to attack him and come against him. But obviously, as we know, he wasn't allowed to hurt or you know, kill him. Mm -hmm. He wasn't allowed to take his life. And, you know, that's just the reality of it is we, we, we get that false thinking of, oh, the safest place is God's will. Well, yes, but that doesn't mean it's going to look safe. That doesn't mean it's going to feel safe because if, if it looked safe and it felt safe all the time, it wouldn't take any faith. I think it would be an affront to each of the apostles and the disciples if you uh, went back and told them that because each of them died a martyr's death. So, you know, like John, I, I, you know this, maybe you know this. One of my particular phrases that I don't like is that God has a wonderful plan for your life. I don't really, I don't really like that. I understand it, but how silly would it sound like for you as John Baptist was getting ready to be beheaded if you leaned down to him and said, you know, God's got a really great plan for your <laughs> life, all 30 seconds of it. It's just one of those things that, and it, it ties in directly with that, that you're in God's will. It may not seem like a safe place, but you're going to land safely. God's going to see you through. And, and if that's what happens, then you know that you've been obedient and you receive the hero's welcome and into heaven. Well done, good and faithful. 
But people, we, we sometimes need to examine our theology and look at what we actually believe. It's not supposed to be all soft and warm and fuzzy and cuddly. Sometimes it gets rough. No, you look at Stephen when he right? was getting stoned to yeah. death. And I see Jesus. he got to look up and see Jesus kind of giving him, you know, standing ovation. Like, yeah. I, I mean yeah. that, like. He stood up. It's a, it's a, you've got a great purpose and there is a great plan, but mm-hmm. God's great might not look like your great. Right. Your great looks like, oh, I'm going to have a great big house and a yeah. nice car. Yep. And, you know, maybe you can, maybe you will. Don't know. But that's, I mean, we talked about it last week that the Western culture yes. and in America, we just have this weird thinking that, you know, blessed it automatically means prospering money. financially mm-hmm. and money and status. And like, no, blessed in the Bible was more about being happy. Yeah. God's peace. So the story is a little one in Sunday school that we grew up with. Paul was in the boat, went into the storm, shipwrecked. Uh, landed on the island. While they were uh, in there, you said that they were throwing out the stuff that they they needed and they gave up hope of being saved. And I love how you said this, and I wrote it down. That we gave up hope of being saved. He, you said, they didn't lose it, they gave it up. I thought that was so cool because I like to, I read this so much and I was just trying to slow down and you know, you try to put yourself in that mm-hmm. position and, and see you know what, what would they have been thinking. And, I mean, it's just, they went through so much already. They already got rid of the, the cargo. Well, not all of it, because obviously the they bed. still had some food. <laughs> but, yeah, that was what was cool. And I was like, man, this is why it's so good to see what the Bible says and don't just read it. Because when I read that, I'm like, okay, they threw the tackle out. And I immediately think modern-day tackle where, you know, they're throwing all this stuff to, that would, you would use to catch fish so you could feed yourself. And I'm like, man, that's a desperate situation. And then I was like, well... Let me make sure that's what that, that means before I stand up on Sunday and someone's like, ah. So I was like, <laughs> okay. And then I found out it was furniture. And it's like, well, that's almost worse because now you have nowhere to rest. You have no rest from the turmoil, no rest from the storm. You're just on this boat and you're going with the movements. And then if you're going to try to sleep, you're ending up laying on the floor. Yep. And then it goes even longer and then they can't see, so they can't navigate, they can't you know, know which way they're headed. I mean, you know, they don't even know if they're headed towards land right. at this see point. Anything. You can't see anything. And I can't imagine how dark it was during the day. And then I meant to say it's Sunday, but, you know, obviously if they had anything, it would have been just the little lanterns. Mm-hmm. So night is pitch black. Mm-hmm. You don't have, you know, a clap on lamp or something that you can sit there and turn on and there's no flashlights, there's no batteries. Like you don't see anything. And so you're just pitch black. Is a terrifying place. Flying around at, at night. night. And so I thought it was great. It was just, it didn't say they lost hope. It says they gave it up. And, you know, maybe it was semantical kind of thing, but it was like, man, how cool is that? That it's just, they gave up hope because like that, I talked about, you know, you can lose things, you can lose your keys, Mm -hmm. you put them in the wrong spot, you know, you can lose this, you can lose that, but to actually give it up is, that's your own choice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I wanted to drive that home. No matter what you're going through, no matter how hard life looks, how bad the storm is, you cannot give up hope. You have to hope Hold on to hope. You know, the whole thing that I said of hope is an anchor for our soul, yeah, that which was is good. even better for the anchor and being in the sea. And Jesus is your hope. He's your anchor. I mean, oof. Isaiah 33, 6, you quoted that and you said, your trust in God is the most valuable thing in your life. Yes. And I love that when you started hammering that idea home. Uh, hold on to your hope. Hope is the anchor for your soul. And you can live, you know, what do they say? You can live three minutes without air, 40 days without food, but not one minute without hope. So yeah, I mean, once you. once you get rid of that, it's just, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they just, they don't have I think everybody is going through for. trials. Everybody's going through some yeah. kind of trouble and trial, a test and all that. But when you have hope, that hope yeah, is Yeah, we always fast. hope that it gets better. And it's, that's one of the things the enemy tries to trick you with is that, you know, when things are good, he'll tell you it's not going to be like this for long. Mm-hmm. But the minute you're going through something and you're going through the storm, then it's, it's always going to be this way. It's not going to yeah. get any better. He tries to get you to give up hope. He tries to get you to get rid of the hope, to, you know, to try to make you accept the false idea that there's nothing left to live for. There's no one in your corner. No one cares about you. No one loves you. Look at everything falling apart. There's no reason to hope. There's no reason that's going to get better. 
And it's like, man, that's just not how God is. That's It doesn't matter. And I felt weird saying the things I said. Like, it didn't matter if you lost your spouse or a child or your job or your home or Those your health or your reputation or your financial. Those are all big, big things. things. And it sounds... You know, when you sit there and you're like, oh, it doesn't matter if you lost this. It's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. Obviously, that still hurts and you're still going to grieve. Yep. But those are all physical things that you can lose. Mm-hmm. But when you give up your hope yeah. that it's ever going to get better, that's, I mean, that's just when you, you lose your life, essentially. I loved all of it. And I see some good quotes coming in there. Kathy, welcome from Sandy Ridge, North Carolina. Glad to have you along with us and dropping the quotes in the, in the sections. Stop looking for the reason of the storm and start looking for the revelation of your story. Yeah. Woo! Because when, when the angel met Paul and told him what was going on, nowhere in there is like, you know, hey, I know this is tough, you know, whatever. I know uh, it's been going on this long, but this is why it's storming. This is why it's so bad. It was just, no. Keep up your courage because no one's going to die. You still have to get to Rome. Mm -hmm. And that's just the revelation of the providence of God that, you know, it's not going to look like how you want it to look. It's not going to happen like you think it's going to happen. You might not feel safe in it, but the sovereignty of God is still going to protect you in that and get you through. Even if you you think you're not going to get through, he's still going to make sure that you get to where you need to get because you do have a purpose for your life. You do have wonderful plans, <laughs> but he's got something that he wants you to do, and maybe you don't know what that is yet, but you will find out. The more you seek him, the more you follow him, the more you ask him, and the more you just set your eyes on him, your heart and your mind will be transformed, and you'll begin to start to feel what you're called to do, and then there's also the fear that we slip into where... Uh, it's something we were talking about earlier about how, you know, you don't trust yourself to do something and, you know, you'll never do it and you worry about, oh, doing it this way or doing it that way and trying to line everything up perfectly. But it, it's only until you just step out and try it that you truly see, um, you know, what what is inside of you, what God has put in you. I, I You know, like with coming back here and saying, you know, I felt led to preach and then there was, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to do this and trying to figure out how to do that and what to study and what to preach and this and that and then finally had the thing in the youth and then the first time I preached here and it was just like, man, I, I can keep putting that off all day until mm-hmm. the future until I feel like I've got enough ideas in my head until I feel like I have enough of a well to dig up out of and I feel like I have enough experience or something but until I actually just sat back and I was like, I just have to put it on the calendar and go up there and do it only then did I see what was inside of me, and it was, you know, oh, okay, I, I can do this. God's going to see me through it. Like, it's not that big of a deal kind of thing. And it's yeah. just just sometimes we just get stuck in the mindset of thinking everything's got to line up perfectly. Yeah. And it's like it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to take that first step, yeah. and God will meet you halfway. He'll meet you right there. Mm-hmm. Not even halfway. He'll cut. As soon as you start taking a step, he's already meeting you. So many times people miss the, the great opportunities because they're waiting for everything to be perfect. They're waiting for it to be obvious. They're waiting for it to line up and look right and for everyone to agree. And it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Well, God doesn't always operate like that. Sometimes he does the things that make absolutely no sense at all. And you just have to have the faith. And the most, one of the, what you said, the most important thing that you have in trust, you're trusting God is the most valuable thing in your life. When you finally learn how to trust God, you stop looking at men, you stop appealing to men, you stop hoping that they will come through for you, and you really start laying it down where you just trust God. That's where he wants you to be. That's where he's always wanted you to be. No matter what you're going through, no matter what storm you're in, no matter how bad it looks, no matter if the ship sinks and you're swimming, and it sounds so cliche, but if you continue to just trust God, he, he will respond to that. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you can't lose that. You can't lose People that. People will always, always let you down. I don't, it doesn't matter who it is. At some point, they will let you down. I don't care you know, if you share the same bed and you've been married for 47 years. At some point... People will, they're just going to let you down. It's just inevitable. And it might not be something they do intentionally. Mm-hmm. It could just be, you know, you had too, a little too high of an expectation or, you know, whatever. They, they forgot something. Whatever it is, eventually they're going to hurt your feelings. But 
God is the only one that you truly can trust because you know that no matter what, it's he's working out through. for your good. He's doing it. He's got a purpose for your life. He's going to take care of you. And like, you know, like we keep hammering it. it it's just, that doesn't mean it has to look like the idea that you have in your head. Wonderful quote. It only looks, it's only when it looks hopeless when you find out, only when it looks hopeless is when you find out who your hope is. Yes. Who is your hope? Who is your hope? God, Jesus is your hope. I mean, we think like that. The ship started, you know, it, it got worse and it got worse. It sank. And it sank. And then they have to swim. Well, <laughs> some of them swim and some of them had to use the broken pieces. And that was the thing. I was like, you know, sometimes God will let your Come ship on. sink. That way you can use the pieces of what broke apart because he doesn't want you to stay in that. Use that to get to where you need to be. And where you needed to be was not where you thought you needed to be, but it was where you needed to be on the way to your destination. That was the whole the whole detour to the destination kind of thing. And it's just as soon as it gets... Uh, you see it time and time again. As soon as the bottom falls out and you go through all kinds of hell and you're finding yourself on rock bottom, as soon as your situation looks completely hopeless, you know that's when people are like, "Oh, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll pray and I'll, I'll turn to God or you know, jelly the, roll." You see all that kind of stuff, and it's like, "I only talk to God when I need a favor." Yeah, and that's not how it needs to be. That's not how it has to be. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, is it's a very good thing that God is incredibly patient and God is incredibly He's loving mm -hmm. because uh, think of it from a human perspective. If somebody doesn't talk to you until they need something from you and that's the only time they God hit is, you up, He's patient. you're not answering. He's patient. Or you're going to be like, I'm going to let them sit there a little bit longer. But it is an amazing thing that God, yeah, good. even his enemies, mm -hmm. he still uses for his purpose. The ship sank. So you said that what they felt like they needed, they lost. So the ship sinks. They make it to shore. They get some wood together and start... <laughs> I've loved that story since I was a kid. They start building a fire and everybody's collecting wood to go get stuff and put it in the fire. <laughs> and Paul... Paul finds the one where there's a viper. You imagine? No. Exactly. I hate snakes. I mean, that is literally Woo. just... I would have died from a heart attack. <laughs> Snake <laughs> bit me, I'd be like, kill we me, Lord We used to Lord find Jesus. them all the time in um, the Transformers. Yeah, Like the snakes. little green ones in the, uh, uh -huh. in, the, in the neighborhoods. But I'm I mean, like Indiana Jones. I don't like no snakes. No, it doesn't bother me. So it bit him, and I'm sure that as people look at him, so, oh, well, look at this. He dodged the, the shipwreck. He dodged the storm. Couldn't dodge the snake. God's you know, going to give him some justice. And he shook that sucker off, and you said, shake it off like nothing happened. Yeah, he shook it. I mean, he just kept it. It doesn't say anything. You know, he just shook it off and... That's going cool. about his business, and they were sitting there for a while waiting to see if he was going to puff up and die. Right. I mean, I just, that's why I had to, I had to go in on that for a minute because it was like, man, you just, after everything <laughs> you just went through, you've been beaten and arrested, and you're in prison for two years, and then you're on this boat that has problem after problem after problem, then you're in this storm, and then it sinks, and then you swim to this island. And then you're just trying to get a fire and get warm and get dry. And here comes a snake. Bam. I mean, at, at, you're just like, come on. Like, could this get any worse? But he was just like, just and shook yes, it off it and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And I just think that was so awesome. And that was, you know, something I think that really should speak to people if it didn't already. Um, just no matter who's saying stuff to you, who's lying about you, Come who's on. attacking you, now who's you're putting preach. stuff you're take up an offer over your, <laughs> who's putting stuff over your life, and they're trying to cause you all kinds of chaos, and maybe they're wanting to see you suffer, and maybe they want to see you die. All you've got to do is just shake it off because you serve Jesus, and now they have to watch you in a better mindset, in a better mood, because you have the joy and the peace of the Lord and the grace of the Lord, and they have, <laughs> and they have to see you shake it off. They have to see you dance for Jesus. They had to see you serve Jesus. They have to see your life completely changed because they're looking for that negative reaction from you. They are looking for you to respond to how they're treating you. And when you just shake it off and keep moving and keep praising God and keep worshiping God, come on, that cuts so much deeper. And not that that's the point of it, obviously. That's not what I'm saying by any means. But that cuts so much deeper than any retaliation that you could do. Yeah, amen. You keep going. Uh, it's one of my favorite sayings, and I say it 
for actually 30 years. That's a good, and I, I, I meant to, I forgot. To I start. cut it, I cut it out. I had it in when I was writing before Which I one? put everything on the notes. But um, when they came against him with the false accusations, uh, when he got arrested in Jerusalem, um, and I don't remember what, one of them was defiling the temple, and I forget the other ones, but one of them was a, 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 like a, a personal insult, and it was a personal attack. And Paul, when he gives his rebuttal against it, he never acknowledges the personal attack. He literally doesn't even talk about it, doesn't bring it up, nothing. Just blows it off like it didn't even phase him. And he talks about the other stuff that obviously he didn't do and, you know, says that they're lying and all that kind of thing. But it was just, you know, that's why... Your, your response can't be to people. Your response has to be to God. It has to be about God. He immediately, you know, launches into, you know, I didn't do this. Mm -hmm. This is what God, I'm just trying to, you know, do what God wants me Amen. to do. He doesn't sit there and say, oh, well, oh, you're attacking me and start launching into them. He doesn't. And it was even after they beat him. They carry him up the stairs mm -hmm. because he was he beaten so walk. bad. And then he stops the soldiers and turns around and gives a speech to the people that just beat him. Come on. And he speaks to him in Jewish so that they know he's a fellow Jew and they have to sit there and go, oh, whoops. Whoops, we shouldn't have done that. And they actually, I'm pretty sure the Bible says they immediately fell silent when they heard him speaking in Jewish. They did, he beckoned with Jewish. his hand and they went silent. Like, um, whoops. So what it is, going through all of that, going through all of that, going through all that, and it has, a, it has an application to us right now, don't stop, just keep going. Uh, it sounds, again, we've gotten on a roll on this in the last few weeks. It sounds like a cliche, but you just keep going. You just keep going. And we know, and you said it Sunday, that when he went through all of that and then he got to a place where he laid hands on uh, somebody, and that was my favorite part of the whole story. Now, so yeah. I'll let you tell it, but the, the quote was, the hand that was poisoned was used to display God's power. How... That was my favorite cool. part of the whole sermon. Was that he? They are in. I'll bring Malta. it up again. Malta. I knew what it was. Just because you're in Malta, in Malta don't mean the you're unknown Malt place, the season you didn't expect yourself to be in. Come on, surrounded by people that you don't know. Maybe they don't even speak your same kind of language. Um, it's not your destination. It's your it, detour. It, yeah, it was the detour. It wasn't the destination. But they wouldn't have heard the gospel had Paul not shown up. Come on. And the very guy that they saw the snake bite and they thought he was a murderer and they you know thought he was cursed essentially because he should have died but he didn't die. He ends up praying for like the head guy of the island, they his father, hands on the and heals him. And the, I mean, that cover. is how powerful is that? That the very hand. Well, it says hands. So obviously, because you couldn't say if it just said laid his hand, you could argue, well, maybe it was the other hand and it was wrapped up. But it says he laid hands on him. So one of those hands <laughs> is the hand that got bit by the snake that the enemy tried to take out, tried to poison, and he is used to show God's power. God's power flows through that hand and heals this guy. I mean, it didn't it didn't phase him, and he gets to literally heal someone's illness. And then all of the rest of the sick people on the island come up and get healed. Let's go. I mean, and and you worry about, oh, I shouldn't be here right now. Right. I'm supposed to be in this job. I thought I would be up here by now. I thought I would be a manager of my store right now, but I'm still down here, you know, shucking the fries and flipping burgers and I thought I don't know it's the best thing I could think of shucking at the time fries. but you know we, we we expect to be somewhere simply because we always look around at everyone else's progress mm -hmm. and Their perceive highlight. it into what we live through. I mean, like that, we live in this Instagram society where we see all of the highlight reels and we compare it to our behind the scenes and we look at the fake filters and, you know, oh, look at their perfect little family portrait. And then when we go to take pictures with our family, it's a nightmare and, you know, you got to do 400 photos just to, to get, get like one. six that look okay. And, you know, you don't ever think, well, they're doing the same thing. We just always immediately attribute, attribute it to, well, their life is perfect. My yeah. life's terrible. You know, I wish I had what they had. And the grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. The detour shows you how to rely on God. And this applies to what you were just saying. Don't ask why I'm here. Instead, 
ask what am I supposed to be doing while I'm here? Exactly. What, why, you know, I mean, you can sit all day. Why is this happening to mm -hmm. me? Why am I going through this? Why is everything falling apart? But if you switch your thinking and you switch your mindset into what can I learn here? What does God want to show me here? What does God want to do through me here? Who does God want me to speak to here? Who does God want me to reach here? I Every mean, like day. That. Every day. You know, Paul, why, why did I go through this storm? Why am I on this island instead of Rome? Why did I just get bit by a snake? A why did they beat me half to death? Look why am I still doing. in chains? And then all of a sudden, boom, he's healing a guy. Okay, yeah. who did you want me to reach on this island? Who did you want me to preach to the gospel on the way to where I'm supposed to go? Who else do you want me to heal Come on. on this island? I mean, as soon as you switch your thinking and you switch your mindset and you quit looking at the negative and you start looking at the positive, there's so much more power in positive than there is in negativity. I might have to take up offering. That's a fact. I mean, and it's just the constant reminder of being faithful. Be faithful. Faithful to God where you are with who you are and what you have and all of that. Don't stop. Paul's faith kept him moving forward. And I love this. This is one of my, oh, well, Kathy Murray just actually said this. Every storm on this earth came to pass. Oh, yeah. That was, so, I, and I gave credit. That was, I heard that on T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. and it, it came I mean, to pass. He's got the cheat code. I was with, waiting for you to say, it didn't come to stay. It came to I pass. I can't do it. I can't. Even how, he, God, just how he says, <laughs> the way he talks, it's just, he's got the cheat code for preaching just because of his, his voice. Yeah. But <laughs> come on. I was like, as soon as I heard that, um, and it was, it was kind of a similar sermon to mine, but it wasn't the same passage and it wasn't the same stuff. But as soon as I heard that, I was like, I, I, I want to end with that because mm -hmm. it was so good. I mean, the, it, 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 yeah, it's in the King James and there's, you know, in the NIV, I think it just says one day or, you know, on this, whatever. But in the King James, it came to pass. It came to pass. And it was 457 times in the King oh. James that phrase is used. And I love that it is a transitional phase. It is used to bring you into a story or it is used to bring you out of a story. And, oh, man, it was it just so good. Stay, it that, you know, it came to pass. It came to pass. And there's no storm that has happened on this earth, no matter how great, no matter how many tornadoes there has been, no matter... Uh, how Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, they go and chase all these twisters. None of those stayed around. Come on. And there's no hurricane, no matter how many billions of dollars of damage the storms have taken and how many lives they've taken, they have always come to pass. So the storm that you're going through right now as well will, will come to pass. And, oh, man, that was so good when I said the rain. He's wanting to it preach was speaking right it to me. The rain has to retreat and the clouds are He's going to, to clear and the sun is going to come out so you will see what the sun has brought you through. You have survived 100% of everything you've ever gone through. You're not dead. You're not dead yet. So you've survived. There's a reason. There's a purpose. While you have breath, you have hope. You have a purpose. Uh, but I was waiting on you to say that. In fact, I leaned over to your mom and I said, I hope he's going to say this. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. <laughs> no. I mean, I was close, but no, I didn't, I didn't go that route. And but the last I mean, thing that I had in... I'm watching all these quotes, man. Y'all ought to be screenshotting one another's comments over there. Everything great comes on the other side of a storm. Yeah. Nobody wants to think about that, Ooh. though. We just want things to come easy and life to be smooth and buttery and, you know, have all the money <coughs> in the bank. But just like that, all of the, you think of how Apple and I'm pretty sure Google too, they started in a garage and I'm sure it didn't just take off. And I even remember in schools uh, when Apple was kind of blowing up and they started putting the computers in the computer lab and there was only like a certain few, I'm sure it's like all that they use now at schools, but it was like the ones that had the colored yeah. uh, clear backs and like, it was like a fight to get those in school when those were coming up. And so even that, that came after a storm, but it was just everything good comes after suffering. It comes after a storm in your life. Everything great always comes on the other side of a great pushback. There's always a great op op opportunity hiding on the other side of a great obstacle. There's nothing in life that just comes easy. If it comes easy, you, you don't appreciate it as much. When you have to work for it and you have to push for it and you have to trust God for it, when you get to the other side of that storm, it's so much sweeter. It has so much more meaning to you. It has so much more that you care about it instead of you know God just dropping in it, in, 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 it into your lap 
Because then you think, oh, you'll think it was just a fluke and you didn't have to do anything for it. And you think it was all in your power, but you know, it's always in God's power. It, mm-hmm. There's nothing that we can do that exceeds what he Amen. can ever do for us. When you said that, I thought of dad. I uh, took a couple of minutes there on the front row to kind of reminisce a minute because one of my dad's quotes that I will never forget was, you have to be ready for the storm before the storm. No matter what, what it is, you know, we're right now in a, in a good season, but you have to be preparing. You have to be preparing for the storm. When life is going well, you have to consider the ant. The ant continues to do the work and do everything like preparing because they know that something is coming. Be ready for the storm before the storm. And, and nobody gets a pass. When Dad got sick, um, you know, we had one of those long conversations that he and I had one day. And, I, you know, I was like 38 years old and I was ticked off about it. And I'm like, well, why you? You know, you've never smoked, drank, done anything wrong. You've lived a good life and here you got this sickness. And he said to me, he corrected me, he said, why not me? Everybody gets a turn and now it's just my turn. And I thought, well, that's a man who's ready for the storm. Life just happens. Yep, it just happens. So no explanation for it. So everything great comes on the other side of the storm. So you have to be ready for your storms. It makes me think of, of Noah. And what was it, like 100 years that it took yeah. him to build the ark? Mm-hmm. And you think, I mean, just the, that, getting ready for the storm before the storm. Not just building the ark and prepping mm-hmm. all of that and making sure that was ready. But all of the ridicule that you would get for building this giant boat Mm -hmm. for a hundred years telling people, hey, it's going to rain, you're done. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, where's the rain today? You know, oh, here's another. And then like year after year, you're like, no, it's coming, it's coming. And I mean, a testament to Christianity when we're like, hey, Jesus is coming back. And they're like, oh, he hasn't yet. Where's he at now? And it's just, that's such a testament that he was building the boat, enduring the storm of people's comments about him and to him while he's building it. And then, once he gets it done, there's also the reality of, okay, yeah, the ship would survive that storm. He still had to go through that storm Mm -hmm. that flooded the entire earth. And that was not going to be, you know, some stroll through the park, you know, just on a boat. Like that thing had to have been rocking, you know, with all the animals and, you know, what they do when they hear thunderstorms and lightning and getting rocked around. That's a whole bunch of stuff that you got to clean up. I mean, he Nobody was going through it. We don't think about that. We're just like, oh, Noah went through the storm and then all the animals came off. Like, no, that was a messy time. Come on. When you get to the other side, it's a woo moment. You appreciate it more. That's a fact. Nobody likes to go through storms, but when you get through that and you go through that, your faith is stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Again, and it my prepares favorite you for comment, what the, next the devil test. should have killed me when he had a chance. The all next right. Test. That was a good sermon. It was a good word. I liked it. That was uh, no time to a die. lot of fun. I think people should be encouraged by that. Uh, Older folks, too. I mean, we've got work to do. We've still got things to do. Young people, no time to die. No time to roll over and give up and just let the life go on. You've got a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. If you joined us between the beginning and now and you didn't hear about it, uh, go to our pages. How do they find all of these new pages that we've got? Uh, Everything really gets pushed on Facebook. Um, So go to our Facebook and everything kind of goes out there. Um, grief but, share is yeah, coming up share in the next few on days. On our website, it's always under the events on our website as well. Family but care is going to be rolled out Facebook. Sunday. Be here for Sunday. Uh, as a matter of fact, Sunday, uh, as a matter of fact, I get a shot. I'm going to load the guns and, and go after it. Um, this Sunday is my turn, and I'm going to be talking about be where you need to be. I'm, I'm ready for that one. I am already. Oh, You're already that, ready. You know, oh, we need to have two services on the weekend so getting, you can do it too. No, we've tried that before. And it, <laughs> it didn't work out that good. Um, you find out who the people like more really quick. Not that. Uh, we'll oh. do it a different way. We'll do it a different way. But uh, no, I'm, I'm excited for that since I know what you had said it was going to be about. Be and good. then mine that I had kind of builds upon that. But mm-hmm. the stuff already Ladies swirling around Kelsey Cochran is here. for me for that message, I'm, I'm already pumped up. I was pumped up about this one, and now the stuff that I'm already like swirling around, I'm Ready. stoked for the next one. going to be good. So thank you guys for being with us tonight. Uh, make a plan to be with us on Sunday. Don't be late. Come early. I'm starting to see a little trend. I'm hoping that I'm seeing it grow. Make a plan to get here early. Be in your seat at 10 o'clock. We start right at 10 um, good music this week. Y'all are throwing out some 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 things this yeah, week. Yeah, we we're trying to roll out a couple new songs. Whoop. 
Uh, I'm really excited. You're going to post the uh, set list, I'm sure. Yeah, she always posts it. Follow us on Facebook. Stay up with all the new things that are going on. I saw also the conversations that are happening in the new uh, family chat. Is really it's a private page, right? The community right? thing, yeah. The community thing, family. If you're a member of our, well, if you just check on us out on Facebook, <laughs> find that we'll let you in there. But it's a private area. Yeah, it's private. It's uh, it's just, I mean, for everyone to jobs and any needs cool. that they have, and just, I mean, even just, I think just chatting. And they're and doing connecting that. with people. Just yeah, there people was the one lady that in. had just came in. They just moved here from um, Williston. So that was cool. Yeah, glad to have y'all. And Good there was thing. a couple. I think there was a couple people that came up Sunday that that was their first time being here as well. Yeah. So, so all of us invite somebody, post it when you see it, our yeah, stuff, definitely. post it, share it, all that kind of stuff. Most people will come with an invite. Always share what we do um, and and comments and everything. I mean, that's why. If you guys don't remember the reel that you had um, that Kelsey did on TikTok that got over half a million views, it it what makes it take off is always engagement. So just. Going on there and liking it isn't really enough. Uh, you know, you've got to make a comment, watch it through, leave it in the background, let it loop and play again. Uh-huh. That's the stuff when when uh, when they see that you watch it more than once, and then you like it and share it, and then you drop a comment or two. That engagement when it's positive and they see replay value, that's what kicks the algorithm. So the fact, like that, that's what made yours go because obviously it resonated with mothers, but it started getting reposted and reshared and then you get a bunch of likes and you get the comments and that's what makes it just take off and we're not trying to get popular ish we're just trying to spread spread the gospel as far as possible so all of that really that stuff lays on y'all's shoulders (laughs) with and did anybody see if y'all saw the uh the new video that you created about the land yes the land share that for pete's sake share that everywhere that was a great video, by the way. Mm-hmm. I know that Kelsey did cool. it all, but it was uh, <laughs> really good. Really no, good. That was good. Um, I've sent it to a bunch of people myself privately. It had like three or 400 views in like an hour or two, so that was good. Oh, good, good. It was good. But uh, yeah, so all definitely right. just stay up and get here early. Thanks for being here tonight. Yeah, we did the announcements. We'll so, see you. With that, we'll see you <laughs> Sunday. It's... Have a great week. Bye. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.